Hi everyone, shall we get going? I think there's still a few that may pop in, but we'll get started. Um, I'm gonna try and condense a whole lot of information into an hour. I don't know how we'll go. What you'll see is I'm breaking every presentation rule you can imagine. You're gonna see very busy slides with lots of writing. I'm not gonna go through everything. Um, before I begin, a couple of things. Um, this will be available on the website soon, in the next few days. And the video uh, that we're taking of this presentation will also be there. So if you want to watch it again, catch up on bits, if you're not clear about things, if you think you missed stuff, you'll be able to watch that again as well. Just as a show of hands, so we know, um, how many people here are staff at Swinburne? Students and alumni. Any other? Oh, that's good. Excellent. That's a really good mix. Um, okay. What we're going to do is this is what we're going to do tonight. So who are we? What's the Swinburne Innovation Precinct? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the program itself, how it works, what we expect of you, what you get from us, um, specifically what you'll be learning and what you'll be doing, um, and then what you need to be able to apply. So what that application process is going to be like and the expectation we have around it. Um, and then we'll run through some FAQs and then open up for you guys to ask specific questions if you want. What you'll find is FAQs in your information pack, they're on the website um, and they'll be in this presentation again later. Any questions before we get going? No? All right, let's do it. So who are we? The Swinburne Innovation Precinct um, is basically the front door of innovation at the university. So we are meant to be the conduit between the industry pieces, the faculty pieces uh, and the research uh, insofar as innovation goes. So specifically what we do here is find that marriage between great IP that's been created in the university and the way to commercialise it and enable academics and staff members to then create businesses from the work that they do here or alternatively work with industries to create new opportunity and birth businesses. So last year we ran our first accelerator program. We had a number of teams, some of them were academic teams, some were students, some were alumni teams. Um, a number of those teams are doing exceptionally well now, all have moved out of the building, uh, which is nice. In fact, the last one leaves tomorrow, I believe, um, moving to new digs and has just landed a $2 million investment. So things are going well. And really what we do here is help you um, birth and learn how to birth a business as distinct from working on your specific domain expertise. So a number of you are probably experts in an area which has led you to get to this place where you think there's a business opportunity. What we help you do is fill in the business gaps where there may be some um, and surround you with experts who can help you get that business off the ground. Um, I'm not, just so you know, I'm not going to read everything that's on the screen. It'll take way too long. Um, so the Accelerator program, it's a 12-week program and the expectation is that you will attend all 12 weeks and I'll explain how that works shortly. And specifically, it is for founders of businesses who are looking to scale, okay? So what that means is if you do not have a member, if you do not have a member of your founding team that are part of Swinburne family, staff, student, alumni, this program is not for you, we don't offer it for you. So you have to be part of the community. And then if you are part of the community and you are a founder of your business, we welcome you with open arms. And specifically, I want you to think about the word scale because that becomes really important. We are not working at ideation stage. There are a lot of university accelerators that will basically say, if you have an idea, come in here and we'll help you. We expect a little bit more and we expect you to have, have gone a little bit further than that before we take you on. So that's a really significant difference between what we offer here and what the others offer. So the program goals. We do this for a number of different reasons. They're all there, but effectively, what you need to be able to do is validate your market, understand your business models, understand how you're going to generate income, how you build a team, how you uh, work against the competitors in your space, find key partnerships, become investable, um, and be able to articulate what your idea is. One of the greatest challenges of the teams who came through last year, how many people here went to Demo Day last year? Did anybody go to Demo Day? That was part of the video that you saw earlier running, one. So that was an opportunity for all of those founders and all of those teams who went through the 12 weeks to stand up in front of a group of strangers and say, this is our business, this is what we do, this is how we make money, this is where we're headed, and this is why the market needs us. When we started this program, not one of those businesses could clearly articulate why they existed, who they existed for, and how they were gonna be businesses. And that's okay, because that's what the program's for. It's to help you work through those things. So what will be interesting for those of you who make it through 
is the difference between your application pitch and your pitch on demo day. And there'll be light years difference between those things um, because you will have a really fully formed idea. You will understand the kind of business model that you're employing. You'll understand what your market looks like, what kind of um, targeting you're going to do in your comms, how you're going to build the structure for growth. And our interest is helping you find growth. So I'm gonna make this um, as clear as I can make it. A lot of accelerator programs and a lot of founders who are interested in accelerator programs do it so they can get investment. Whilst that's a nice milestone, I would argue, hi, our Venture Cup winner. Um, whilst that's a nice milestone, it actually is largely irrelevant. If you're a founder of a business, I've had eight businesses on four continents, the thing you want to be able to do is grow customers and grow revenues. Having somebody say to you, I'll give you a million dollars at a $3 million valuation is nice, but it does not mean your business will be successful. It does not guarantee you growth. It does not mean you can be sustainable. What we're interested in teaching you is how to run a sustainable business, one that makes money and grows. So that means customers and it means revenues. So this is the program structure. 12 weeks, two days a week. Every Monday and every Wednesday, there will be a morning session for two hours and an after, afternoon session for 90 minutes. Those sessions are mandatory. They're not mandatory for every part of your team, but at least one founder must attend each session. Okay, so you can mix it up as you wish. You don't have to be there all the time, but somebody from your group needs to be there all the time. We do that for two reasons. There is a sequence and a logic to the way the content is provided over the 12 weeks, and it is important that you don't miss parts of, of the content. But equally, this year in particular, we have an extraordinary list of high profile business leaders and speakers and presenters, and you don't want to miss the opportunities. Um, these are really significant people who have done incredible things in the business community. It will be highly advantageous for your business to be part of it. Um, but more than that, um, it's also important that from a collaboration perspective, which is one of the great advantages of an accelerator. So it's one thing what you learn, it's the other thing, the business that you build, but to work with other founders in close, in close proximity for 12 weeks where you can share ideas and help each other and bounce and say, look, I'm, I'm having trouble with this. Oh, that's where we were a couple of months ago when we did X, really important. And to know the content sessions and go through those content sessions adds real value in that collaborative experience as well. Um, so there are mentoring sessions, which are critically important early on in the piece, very early on, in fact, in week one, you will meet a whole series of potential mentors. And what will happen is you'll get to explain what your business is and what the business idea is. And those mentors will explain their background and what they've done, um, most of them in multiple parts around the world. Uh, and then they will select the teams that they think they can add the most value. This is private. And you will select the mentor that you think you would most like to work with. And then we match the teams up. And you'll get two to three mentors who will work with you throughout the 12 weeks. You will then meet with those mentors one-on-one -on -one every week if it's, I mean, it's up to you, but certainly at least every couple of weeks um, at a time that is convenient for both your team and them. And they will really become a key sounding board. What we found is through all the mentors last year, um, at least one mentor effectively became a board member for every one of those businesses going forward. And they added great value. Introductions to investors, introductions to customers, introductions um, to core service providers like lawyers and accountants and so forth. Induction day. May 5, so we're gonna get you to come in. The successful teams will come in for one day. We're gonna sign contracts. We're gonna walk you through the space. We're gonna explain how the building works. We're gonna tell you how all the fun stuff happens. And then you're going to go home for a week and prepare for what will be your first accelerator experience for most of you. And then you'll go through the 12 weeks and the demo day showcase is on July 29. So this is the day, it won't be in this building. We'll have it off site. It will be a big, big day, lots of food, lots of drink, hundreds of people in the room, and you're going to show what you've learned in the 12 weeks, and you're going to officially birth that business of yours. Everybody excited about that? Nobody too nervous about it? Feeling good? All right. So what we expect from you. The first thing, as I said, is attendance at all planned content sessions for at least one founder. Um, you will work from the fire station, from this building, for the 12 weeks. We will give you desk space. It will be for free. Um, but your business effectively starts here. So you can use interns and we'll have a separate conversation about that down the line. All the teams used interns last year. 
They are students, they worked really hard, they added enormous value for those businesses. Um, and it's best to do it on site because they're here and you have proximity, they can go to class, et cetera, et cetera. After the program finishes, there is a period of time where you will be allowed to continue running your business from this office, but only for about another two or three months. And at that point, either you'll start paying below market rent here, um, and then once we start the next accelerator program, you'll have to find the next place to go. Um, but it does give you many, many months to start your business rent free, which is really a huge advantage in a startup space. We ask you to respect the space and the other people in it. Um, whilst it is a lovely space, it is not enormous. And so what you'll find is you'll be in close proximity to other people who are also trying to run businesses and learn things and have conversations and have meetings. We have a digitized process where you can book a meeting room. There are lots of meeting rooms around the building. Um, and obviously there are lots of places around campus where you can work. Um, but, it, but you'll be working like this. It, you're very close with people and we need everybody to be respectful. Um, there are legal and contractual obligations with us. So how you invoice us, how we pay you, what the expectations are about your attendance, what our expectations um, are about what we have to give you and the way that we provide those services. Um, it's all there and we'll expect you to, to uh, uphold the, the contract that we'll sign. It's a very basic contract. You don't need to be nervous about it. Um, and then we need you to bring an open and collaborative mind to the experience. So one of the things about being a startup entrepreneur um, is that there is no single pathway. No two businesses are the same. No two entrepreneurs are the same. So everybody's going to add a different flavor to the experience. Everybody's um, challenges and everybody's excitements and everybody's opportunities will be a learning experience for the person sitting next to them. We will bring in people who have done it over and over and over again, but that should be um, informative rather than instructive. So we want you to gain some sense of excitement and learn something from their journey, but it doesn't mean their journey is gonna be the same as your journey. What it does mean, however, is we're gonna arm you with people who can help you through your particular journey as it goes along, whether they be mentors, whether they're the entrepreneurs in residence here, whether it's the, the faculty of the Swinburne Innovation Precinct um, themselves. So what you get, this is the greatest prize purse in the history of university accelerator programs in Australia. Um, no, it is, it's really good. So uh, $30,000 cash, no equity. That's paid um, in, is one tranche now? Or two tranches? One tranche week four, I think, three or four. So you will send us an invoice in week three. Um, we will then pay you the $30,000 in one lump sum. We need to see that you've turned up so that you know there was a team last year who did not turn up. They were removed from the program. They received $0. So we expect things from you. We're putting world-class people here to teach you and we expect a commitment in return for $30,000 given we're taking no equity. The second thing you're gonna get is free rent on campus, which I've mentioned. Um, you're going to have an opportunity to get $10,000 of free accounting services for each business. Um, that doesn't mean you have to use it in one lump sum, but we will introduce you to a major uh, accounting and financial services firm, one of the biggest in the country, uh, and they are there to help you when you need help. Um, that is invaluable as you are structuring and setting up your business, because the last thing you want to do is set your business up in a way that does not allow you to grow in the way that you hope to grow. Structurally, I'm talking about. Um, the other thing is this year we've done a deal with Cause, which we hadn't done before. Uh, cause will enable, uh, that deal will enable you as founders to access hundreds of different contract templates that have been written by one of the best law firms in the country. Everything from your employment contracts to your terms and conditions on your website through to uh, major partnership deals, MOU deals, um, and all of that is free for you to use as part of the program. You will save hundreds of thousands of dollars using that program. Um, 15,000 free cloud, uh, cloud services from Swinburne's partner, AWS. So as you start building your digital businesses, that will allow you to have some fun in the cloud um, and you can start that business without worrying about the bills starting on day one. Uh, this year, we also have signed Airwallex, which we didn't have last year. So Airwallex, for those, does anybody know, does anybody not know who Airwallex is? Okay, a few. So uh, startup, amazing startup um, company. They deal in foreign exchange transactions, which means that if you are selling products overseas, transacting overseas, have customers or suppliers, um, they will enable you to have $150,000 worth of free transactions fee free, which means normally when you do those things, the bank charges you to make those transactions. And they're saying for the first 150,000 of transactions, it will cost you nothing. Um, we have world-class mentors and presenters and 24 hour entrepreneurs in residence on site. So what that effectively means is, um, and believe me, I know because I was one last year and I got calls at all time of the day and night and every day on the weekends and nonstop, 
is that there are people here to help you through anything that you're going through within the context of the 12 weeks. So if you're looking at, you know, if you're having trouble with your business plan, if you can't quite get the narrative right, if you're doing a customer deal and you need help on figuring out how to do it, if you're looking at pricing models, whatever it might be, looking at a contract, there are people here to help you. It doesn't cost you anything, you just make an appointment and literally they are in the building with you the whole time. Um, it's also worth saying, the days that you're available here are not just the days that we do content. So although content days are Monday and Wednesday, you are more than free to work from here all day, every day. So this can be your office full time for 12 weeks plus, um, but those two days, Monday, Wednesday, there'll be some content time with us. Everybody clear on that? Okay, we're going faster than I thought. We're gonna get through it in an hour, miracle. This is the content. This is the best content in any accelerator in a university in this country, I guarantee you. Completely revamped this year. So what you're gonna find is we've got three modules this year, very, very different to the way that we did it last year, and they are de designed um, with a specific purpose in mind. So we start with a foundational month. These are just your basic startup. What do you need to get going? What are the things you need to understand from the storytelling, Founder Resilience, which was a program we ran last year and was one of the most popular programs we ran content-wise. It was all the way at the end of the session last year and all of the team said to us, that would have been amazing if we'd done it early. We're gonna do it super early this time around. Um, viral pathways, values and ethics, understanding your customer base, your market, business model, social impact. If you cannot do those things, if you do not understand where you are here, there is no way you can build a business. They are the foundational blocks of understanding who you are and why you exist. It's gonna be a very intense first month. The second month, module two, structure month, is really about legals, financials, et cetera, et cetera. So now we're getting the contracts right. We're getting the structure of the business right. You're gonna hear from um, major accounting firms, major law firms, major investment houses, VCs, um, people who do this for a living all day, every day, and they're going to teach you about the different options that are available to you as you structure that business. So you come out of the first month with real clarity about what your business is, who you're trying to attract and how you're gonna grow. And then this month is going to be about how you create the structure to enable that to happen. And then finally, we go into module three, the growth month. And this is about PR and marketing and telling your story and channels to market and how you're gonna build sales kits and how you're gonna win business. Yeah, so there's a, there's a very natural flow. It looks like a lot of content. These literally represent every one of these represents either a two or a one and a half hour session that you're going to do. So these are not five minutes sitting in a room where we're gonna brush over marketing. Not one of them is less than an hour and a half. There are big names that I'm not gonna tell you who they are, but there's a big name attached to almost every one of those. It's gonna be a lot of fun, actually. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for, for Swinburne family, alum, students or staff. We want you to be able to present a clear business idea. Okay, it doesn't mean everything needs to be perfect. It doesn't mean we want you to tell us what percentage of the market you'll have in three years time, but the idea needs to be crystal clear. This is the problem and this is how we're solving it. Yeah? Okay, can I just touch on that? You can touch on whatever you want. So look, last year we had real problem with one of the teams, not only did they not turn up, but they actually committed fraud saying that one of their founders was um, a student here. We, we are going to look very closely at your claims. We just need one founder to be Swinburne family, but we will look closely at, at that and validate that, okay? So please, we've already had one team <coughs> being very casual about bringing, a, bringing in a founder to suit, you know, when, when it's clearly not a founder, um, just to, to um, you know, hit that, that criteria. Please, if, if you don't hit the criteria, don't do no Yeah, just don't do it. Um, so clear business idea, we want a well, um, well articulated market opportunity. So again, understanding your market and doing the analysis of market is, is a bit of a skill, and we're gonna teach you how to do it through the program. But what we want now, what that first step is, and I can see you're looking at me with a puzzled look because we did this through Venture Cup. Um, um, oh, well, you shouldn't be doing that either. Um, a well-articulated market position is you being able to say categorically, these are our future customers or our current customers. This is who we are going after and this is why we think it can grow. I'll give you an example. If you are in the space of soccer, which we had a group last year, 
Do not say there are six, million, six billion people who play soccer and therefore my market is six billion people. That is not your market. Your market are the people in this country that you can attract with the services that can afford them using the digital platform that you're offering. Okay? Be able to articulate clearly, sensibly, this is our market, this is how we're going after it. Okay? All of this macro American elevator pitch, we're going to be the biggest thing since Google, we don't believe it, we're not going to buy it, and you won't get in. Okay? We want real numbers. We want you to have thought about what it means to go after your market. We want a product MVP or prototype ideally. So that doesn't mean you have to have product on the shelf. It means that you have to have at, la at least started to build this thing and can show us roughly what it's going to do or it does what it's meant to do at the very base, basic level. Not all the bells and whistles, not as perfect as it's going to be in the future, but it has to work, okay? And then ideally a customer or a user. This does not have to be a paying customer. So even if you've got any group, a community group, a local group, a family group, a church group, a sporting group, it doesn't matter. Somebody who is actually testing it for you and can give you feedback. And if you have that, that is going to go a long way with us because you are now in market. Any questions about that? So what does MVP stand for? Minimum viable product. Can I just ask one question about that? Ask as many questions as you like. In terms of the customer, um, if you had, for example, partnered with someone um, and we're getting their feedback, it wasn't necessarily that kind of transactional. That's, that's fine. If it's a partner who is testing it for you, that's fine. Sure. Sorry, can it be testing the prototype itself? So say the MVP isn't ready to go to market or it's not ready. Testing the prototype is fine. Fine. Yep. All good. Um, can we like, apply the tool programs like the swim burn and the mash at the same time? Uh, accelerator programs, um, yeah, it, only if the schedules allow. Yeah. So what we wouldn't want is for you to be missing our program to be at their program. Yeah. Our, you know, the commitments that we expect here have to be met, and as long as you can meet the commitments, then that'll be okay. okay. Oh, sorry, I'm fine with you applying for two programs, but I don't think you can be in two programs well, at the same time. Are you in a program now, or you're thinking of applying to two? It's not only about kind of like the two programs at the same time. You can apply. Yeah, you can, can apply to 100 programs. Which one? Oh, the pick. Okay. You know. Let's so apply to as many as you can, and then let's uh, deal with the spoils of, of the outcomes afterwards. Sorry. Sorry to slow you down. Um, oh, do good. The, this comment about testing, testing the prototype. Yep. So um, if the pitch is that you want to test commercial or technical feasibility of, mm -hmm. some, of, a, of an MVP or a prototype, that's, yep. that's something that you, 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 you look favorably on. Very it? much so, yep. Any market feedback you can get is going to significantly enhance the quality of what you put out in the space and it will give you a market understanding that you wouldn't otherwise have. A lot of what startups do is have assumptions about what the market wants. To be able to be in market where people are saying, actually we'd prefer it if it did this or it needs to do that or it's too expensive or it's too big or you know, I can't plug it into that. That's the kind of stuff that will bring it to life. Um, and that testing can come in, you know, depending on what your product is, a million different ways. Tell us your progress to date. Okay, so when you are pitching, when you're applying and you're doing this three to four minute video, tell us anything related to this. How many customers do you have? What does the MVP look like? How long have you been in market? How brilliant an idea is it? How, bi you know, how big is the space? How many people have told you they'll use it? Et cetera, et cetera. We don't know unless you tell us. And if you tell us, it is going to serve you well. A lot of people afterwards will not get in and then they'll go, but I have, you know, two and a half thousand customers. Well, fuck, it would have been good to know that. Let us know, okay? So this is the application, three to four minute video. Consider this your winning pitch because this needs to be a good one because it's worth hundreds of thousands in value and 30,000 in cash. So tell us your startup story. Who were the founders? Who were the co-founders? Why did you get it started? And how are you, what's the relationship with Swinburne? Again, you don't, don't feel the need to write everything down. This will be up there and it's in your information pack anyway. Um, why you and why this team? This is a big part of a startup pitch night is to explain why your team is going to be able to solve the problem that nobody else has been able to solve. Okay? That doesn't mean you need to be a world expert at it. It doesn't mean that you need to have had years and years of experience. Simply, 
I am the customer and I know what exists doesn't work and so I am building something that does work and here is why it's going to work is a very good starting point. People who have lived the problem are usually well served in trying to solve the problem. What's your business? Why are you unique? How will it scale? Who's the target audience? Who are you going after? How are you going to get them? Um, what stage is your startup? This is really important. Please don't forget this in your pitch video. What stage are you at? We've just finished the MVP, we're testing, we've just signed our first partner, we have 200 products in the market, you know, we have, we're in 16 states of the United States. Tell us where you're at. Give us a sense of your scale. Um, what's the most important thing that you need to take your company to the next level? This is what this accelerator is about. It's about growth, it's about scale. We need to know that if you get the $30,000 and the, account, the free accounting and the legal contracts and the AWS, et cetera, et cetera, you are clear about how you're going to use it and what you're going to do with it to take your business to the next level. Um, and then explain that market again, not telling me it's six billion soccer players. Your video pitch. Practice it before you do it. Don't send us the first one. Okay, do it a few times. You've got three to four minutes. Know your what, your why and your how. The most important things for any startup entrepreneur. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? And how are you going to get it done? If you do not know those three things, do not bother pitching. And try and get that as concise and clear as possible. Okay? You've got four minutes. Don't spend three and a half minutes on that. Super concise. Prepare a script early and iterate, iterate, iterate. Okay? Keep working on it. Keep practicing it. If you find you don't fit into the four minutes, find out bits that you can move around and fit in. Make sure that you hit the dot points that we said earlier. So all those things we want to hear from you, make sure they're all in those four minutes, which is why you need to write the script and write the speech. Personally, I like to do videos. I do a lot of public videos. I don't write things down. I don't write speeches. It makes me more nervous. If I have a speech, I just like to do this. But when you have a list of 22 things you need to hit, not writing a speech is actually a bit of a problem because you invariably miss things. We don't want you to miss anything. And then finally, add to the major questions don't leave us hanging, okay? So if we get to a point where it's between you and another team for the final spot, and they have been able to articulate some key things about their market size and their channels to market and et cetera, et cetera, and you have left those things off, you're gonna miss out, okay? We can only go off the information that is presented to us, independent of how fantastic we think your idea might be. Make sense? That's the only fair way to do this. The interview schedule, so this is how it's gonna work. You're gonna do the four minute video, we're going to come in and have a look at those videos. We are then going to make a determination about who we think is worthy of interviews. And it's not whether you're, as an individual, whether the business is ready. So the first one, interview 16th of April, 20 minute interview. That's kind of a preliminary. We're gonna test some of the stuff you sent us. We're gonna ask you a few probing questions about some of the assertions you've made. We're going to try and understand, do you understand your business? Do you understand that what? that how and that why. We, we also do due diligence. Right, and we'll do due diligence that day. Which is really important. Um, we need to, if you've got IP, intellectual property, we need to understand that you actually have the rights to it. You know, there'll, there'll be- All the, yeah, the legal yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, all the legal stuff. If you get through this stage, you may be invited to this stage. This is where we're going to make the final call and decide who is going to be in the program. We're going to be testing you more on the business itself channels to market, your, your ability to grow, the quality of the team, how many people are in it, your commitment to the program. So for example, that's where we're going to be asking you things like, okay, you live in Bendigo, that's fabulous. Are you going to be able to come here every day and at the very least a Monday and a Wednesday all day? Okay, what we don't wanna do is get to the place where we were last year, where a team who lived rurally said, yes, they'll make the commitment and then for four weeks didn't make any commitment. We will be probing those questions. We will we'll be asked. bring venture capitalists in at that, at that point. And let me tell you, their bullshit <coughs> meter is really, really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's, no, you know, there's no hiding on yep. that night. You know. um, all final applicants will be notified on the 24th of April. And remember, on the 5th of May is your first day here, is induction day. So about two weeks later. And a week after induction day, week one starts. Okay, so it's gonna move pretty quickly. You'll learn the space, you'll meet your neighbors, you'll get a sense pretty quickly of what you have to do. You'll have to do the, we'll do the due diligence with you. You'll sign a contract. You're gonna to have to get a working with children check. Everybody who works on campus has to have that 
So be prepared for that. That's the only cost of the program and it's not our cost, it's the cost of getting the license. I had to get it when I got a job. Everybody has to do it. Um, Sharon, how much is it? Uh, yeah, so it's about 120 something dollars. You'll have to get it. You can start without it, um, although we don't advise that you do, but within two weeks, HR will make you show, show them the... We can't give you access to the building after hours. After hours, unless you don't have it, yeah. Um, and you actually won't get paid until we see it either. Um, just a quick question, looking at the interview, it says we look at your business plan. Yep. Is there a particular structure you want to see that business plan? No, and, and in fact, the advantage is in us being able to see how you structure a business plan. Sure. Um, if we just gave you the plan, it'd be, you know, there wouldn't be a lot of flavour and understand, we wouldn't be able to see the difference, the grey between each of you. Um, there is no right or way to do a business, wrong way to do a business plan. Mm -hmm. What we, again, how you write it is less important than covering the bits that we've articulated earlier we need to see. Um, and again, we're not looking for a 150 page plan. We just want you to be able to lean canvas style, explain what your business is. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. Does that get submitted after a it'll be part of the It'll be part of the application process. Some frequently asked questions. I'm not going to run through all of them. So I'm going to ask you for four minutes to look at the board. These are the things that we're asked most about. If there are any other questions after this, I will welcome them. But these are the things that are usually asked and you might find an answer on the board. Um, again, you have it in your information packs anyway. This presentation will be available on the website shortly, as will this video, so you'll be able to look at it again. How many teams will be selected? Um, at this stage, we're sort of saying about six. Might be one more, might be one less, but around six is what we're looking at. And again, there are a lot of programs that bring on 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, we are less interested in having a lot of throughput. What we are looking for is real quality business with the potential to scale. Um, and we would rather work with fewer founders and take businesses further than just have more bodies in the building for the sake of having bodies. It's a pretty intensive program and it's a lot of contact hours. So to have 40 or 50 people on those contact hours, you know, we'd need to ask the number of staff to do it. Okay. I'm going to move on from here, but I can come back to it afterwards. Here are the key dates. These are the things, this is really important. So applications are open right now. You could go to the website and apply tonight. If you are feeling daring, I strongly advise against it. Um, on the 10th of April at midnight, applications will close. Okay? We will not take any applications after midnight. If you miss out by one minute, you've missed out until next year. <coughs> Yeah, no, we changed the date. Sorry, this is the correct, these are the correct dates. Um, 16th of April, first round interviews, 23rd round, uh, second round, 4th of May, induction week, 11th of May, week one commences every week for 12 weeks, demo day in the final week on the 29th of July, and then you're free into the business wilderness to run fantastically successful businesses and talk fondly of Swinburne and how we launched you into the world. Are there any other questions? There are. Yes, sorry. Um, who needs to be present for the interviews? Can you bring another founder in or another we person? We would like to meet as many founders as are available, yes. What if there are people that are contracting with your business? You're not entirely sure if you're going to absorb them in? No, no. don't. No, no, no. Perfect. Don't, do not bring anybody who is not critical for us to meet. People will come and go in terms of staff and interns and that's up to you, that'll evolve, that'll change, it'll change over the 12 weeks. So if you look at the teams that went through last year, uh, all of them put on, some of them put on their first stuff, um, all of them put on stuff except for one team, uh, all of them uh, significantly grew their customer base, in fact two of them doubled their customer base, um, two of them doubled their revenue base in the 12 weeks that they were with us. So we want you to focus on the things that matter and we just need to know the people in the business that we are going to have to deal with every day and the people that we need to help work on for those 12 weeks. Your staff are your business. It has nothing to do with us. Any other questions? Uh, just double check, so one founder is okay, right? One founder is fine, 100% fine. As long as, as one founder, you can attend all of the sessions. Yeah. The only advantage that, that multi-founder teams have is that they can sort of tag team who is in and who is out. Um, and I say that because we had a sole founder last year and often he would have business meetings on days where meetings were scheduled and I had to be the badass who said, sorry, you're going to have to miss your business meeting. So um, what we want you to know in advance 
is that the dates and those times are not going to change. So Mondays and Wednesdays, if you're a sole founder who makes it through, you are going to be here and you are going to be working. In between your morning and afternoon sessions, you can do as many meetings as you want, but nine to 11 and 4.30 to six, you're ours. Can I say, while we had one very successful team last year that was a sole founder, we prefer teams. Okay, we, we feel that it brings diversity it brings you know a more rounded approach. No one person can have all the skill sets that a company needs. But it doesn't mean you won't get in if you apply as a sole founder. It won't, doesn't mean you won't get in. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say I've got I'm a sole founder, but I've got three early employees that are heavily yeah. invested, but they're not founders. No. Uh, what do you mean heavily invested? Well, there's equity. They're working for equity. They're mm. they're, been on, they're been on board for at least twelve months. Okay. Well, that it, that's worth articulating for us, so we understand yeah. that. But they're not founders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever taken a, um, a, a, a start that's been not from Australia, so an overseas startup? In the program? Um, I don't believe we have. We haven't, but we've actually been asked that question before and we're totally open to it. Okay. What's, what are you sort of looking for there? I they still just have to... It's, it's exactly the same stuff. They have to be here for the program. Um, and as long as they're here for the program and they're Swinburne family, then where they're operating is, is largely irrelevant to us. Like, I suppose you, it seems that one of your goals is to have uh, startups graduate out, outside of Swinburne and start a business. Yep. Um, and you're looking for... Or grow a business rather than start grow, a business, grow, but... Yep. Grow a business, so that doesn't necessarily have to be in, in Melbourne, Australia yeah. no. or in Melbourne. No. Okay. Okay. In fact, we had um, one of the groups as an example, not through the Accelerator, but through the Venture Cup last year, um, had the vast majority of their customers, they had hundreds of thousands of um, members to their program and the vast majority were not in Australia. It doesn't make any difference to us. So, is there some sort of, like, preferences to things like, for example, if the, ID, the, the business is in IOT? No difference no. whatsoever for us. So it's not like this? Okay. No. So there, there are some examples of accelerators, and in fact, we're talking about running one in partnership with the United Nations. We've just done a deal with them where we would run specifically in an industry or in a market sector. This particular accelerator can be anything. It doesn't make any difference. Um, what, what, what do you want from, from, from the startups? It, it, I suppose it might be a, a proof that you're able to generate successful startups, or what, what do you want from what you mean, how do we measure yeah, success? Yeah, exactly. All right, so good question. So there are a few things. So from our point of view, this is um, the way that the university gives back to its community and it enables a pathway other than a traditionally professional pathway where you get a degree at a university and then you go and you work somewhere. There are lots of people who don't want to do that or who have tried that and want to do something else. This is an opportunity to provide the expertise to enable our community to be the best arm they can be when they go into the business world. What does success look like? Sustainable businesses that come out of our program. So not the ones that necessarily get the biggest investment, not the ones that have the greatest valuation after a year, but ones that are growing, genuinely, organically growing. Customers, staff, revenues, successful, sustainable businesses that will go on for a long period of time. And ideally, founders who will then commit back to this Swinburne community, and after they reach success and find um, some success can come back and then help the next generation of entrepreneurs out. One of the, you know, as somebody who, you know, I started my first business at 17, straight out of high school, um, and the most valuable thing that I had was having people around me who were entrepreneurs who were prepared to help me and teach me things. Um, I made a million mistakes. I would have made too many mistakes if I didn't have those people. Um, and making mistakes is part of good entrepreneurship and being, a, a, you know, it's part of your founder journey anyway. Um, but what we do want is a really robust Swinburne community of entrepreneurs who just continue to generate the next series of entrepreneurs and continue to birth great businesses that contribute to the economy and society. And the other thing it's worth saying is if you have a not-for-profit as opposed to a for-profit business, that's 100% fine as well. Um, just have a bit of a question. So, so basically, we already need to be business mm -hmm. um, so just one question so is it like company or sole trader you could uh, it doesn't make a difference to us so you could be a not for you can be a not-for-profit so company limited by liability there are you know, any which way that you are a registered entity trading and you can answer those questions is fine with us well, well, I think, uh, um,
some trader is really structured to scale? Yeah, you, you'll struggle to be able to make an argument about scale with a sole trader business. It doesn't mean you can't convert, yeah. but I'm just saying... Um, but you do need to be, but if you're starting here as a sole trader and you say, this is where I am now, the intention is to transition to, and this is how we're going to grow, that's fine, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, um, so it's just, that's why I wanted to know like, what, if you had a category in terms of business, and then, um, so basically, so we already need to have some customers already? Or? You don't have to have some customers, but at the very least, we expect you to have somebody who's testing the product. If you have customers, that's a bonus. We'll, that will be looked on very favourably. Um, it doesn't mean that you will definitely get in if you have customers, but it will be very good if you, if you have them. But if you have people who are working your, your prototype or your MVP, that will go a long way with us. Any other questions? There was a video for last year's uh, demo, kind of showcase day, available on, on, on website. That's currently on the website, yep. And the other thing is, uh, are we going to do a day where we're going to bring some of the last year's cohort through to talk to people? Yeah, so at the induction week, um, you'll meet some of the groups who went through last year and they'll be able to talk to you about their experiences and kind of what was easy, what was hard, what to focus on, how to hit the ground running. Um, you'll be able to ask lots of questions of people who were in exactly the same position that you were in a year before. It's okay. Don't apologise, that's what we're here for. <laughs> so we have the chance to meet a visit here. To meet? So we have the chance to meet a visit here or not? I mean, you have the visit as a mentor here? Yes, so, so not every day. Yeah. Um, what you'll find is within those, so if I go back to that. So here in these content sessions, yeah. you're going to find a group of people who uh, are business leaders in that space. So, you know, they're genuine market experts in marketing or PR or investment or whatever the case may be. And as a result of their expertise and their longevity, many of them are investors themselves. Um, in addition to that, on demo day, we invite a, a fairly significant cohort of VCs to meet and hear what happens. And then there'll be a, um, this year, which we didn't do last year, after the demo day that evening, will have an opportunity for you to meet sort of in a more intimate setting with a number of those VCs. The reason for <laughs> we try. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, Co-founders of my innovation, they are like very busy people. Uh, so, and if I want to work someone who has certain, skill, certain set of skills, which can be useful for my innovation, can yep. I Consider him or her as a co-founder, or is going to be considered as no, a... Uh, so unless they own a decent chunk of equity um, and they created the business with you, they're not going to be a co-founder. Um, outside of the, f the founders, who you bring in is your business to, to amplify the skills that you need, and that's fine, and we would encourage you to fill the bits that you don't have. Um, we would like to meet the founders, even if, for example, you said, look, there are three of us, two of us won't be here every week, but one of us will always be here. We'd still like to meet the three and then work with the one. But, but at, at minimum, we need to know who the founders are, independent of how busy they are. Especially if you get through the final interview, I'd strongly recommend bringing all the founders in. Yeah. 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 Okay, the $30,000 equity free funding, yep. where does that come from? It comes from the university. Swinburne pays you to help you start your business as a commitment that we make to the startup community that is separate from going and getting a job somewhere. Okay, how many participants are there? Really? There'll be six teams. We expect there'll be six, maybe minus plus one. Uh, I'm going to get into your, uh, into your pitch. Uh, you're going to describe your business and product and so forth. Now, that sort of amounts really to uh, disclosure. Yeah, so you do, we're not asking for the secret sauce. We're just asking you to tell us what the problem is and how you're intending to fix it. If you have specific IP concerns, you can certainly address them with us. And if you want us to uh, sign something, are you staff member? Are you a staff member or alumni? Uh, how are you connected to the university? Sorry? How are you connected to Swinburne? Well, I know a couple of people here who probably would be interested in becoming a um, joining company and starting off. Okay, so it, it, that, is, that is a possibility, but um, that example is one where we will have to work with you at how that gets set up to make sure that you meet the criteria appropriately. Um, that's not a no, you could absolutely do it, but we would need to know that those people are genuine co-founders of the business and they are part of Swinburne family.
we have people who come here and spend and invest a lot of money and time and energy in getting their degrees. Not all of those people want to go out and get jobs. Some of them develop IP and ideas here when they work for us. Some of them do it outside afterwards. Some of them do it as their, as their students. What we've done is identify that some of those people don't want to get jobs, they want to start businesses. And this is our ability to invest back in our own community so that they can do that. So I'll give you an example of some of the teams that came through last year. So you'll see the diversity. So one of the teams that came through, which was an academic team, has a, um, a digital algorithm effectively that they have built, which enables them to work on social network analysis. They are both experts in that space. They are genuine global experts and they have worked out how to map in a way digitally that hasn't been done before. We had another team that runs an incredibly successful team um, that runs the mo now the most awarded circular economy business in Australia. So they have a piece of technology that they took, they um, licensed and now own from CSIRO and they are in the market enabling businesses to trade um, materials with each other. We have another team uh, that has facial recognition for pharmaceutical deployment. So you go into a chemist, they scan your face, it tells the chemist, this is the drugs I meant to have. Yes, it's, a, it's actually me and they deploy. They're all fundamentally different businesses. All of them articulated the problem that they were trying to solve and how they were going to solve it, and that was good enough to get a place in the program. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. Again, the video, this video will be up online. This presentation will be up online. You have an information pack. Um, just to remind you of the dates again, until April 10 at midnight to get your three to four minute video in, plus the other things that we ask for in the application process. Okay. So if one has a question later on, who do we contact? If you um, contact Sharon. No, the information oh, oh, is it is the email up there? Oh, the email's on the website and it'll come through to the appropriate person. Sharon will decide who can best answer that question for you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thanks.